Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today, Intel is releasing their 500 series boards early, Nvidia announces a big press event, the 3080 Ti gets postponed, release dates on the two 3060 variants, hardware prices could go up, Nvidia released a new monster GPU, and Intel's 8 core 11900K beats their 10 core? Okay, it's news time and first up for today, it looks like Intel's 500 series chipsets could be released before Rocket Lake. The story originally comes from the Chinese news site Weeksin and later published by Tom's Hardware, and it looks like Intel is planning to announce their 500 boards on January 11th, which would mean they plan to do it during CES. The weird part is that if this is true, Intel won't be releasing Rocket Lake until late February or early March. As Tom's Hardware points out, we can expect the new boards to support PCI Express Gen 4, Thunderbolt 4, and will include more PCI Express lanes. Either way, it's still odd that Intel would launch their boards a month earlier than their newest CPUs. Time, as always, will tell. But first, get the best deals for your last minute shopping with today's sponsor, Honey, the free browser extension that finds promo codes for whatever you're buying so you don't have to. Simply install Honey with just two clicks. Then when you're checking out on one of the 30,000 supported sites, Honey pops up, you click apply coupons, then if Honey finds working codes, you get to watch the prices drop. And those who already installed Honey using my link have saved over $11,700. Plus, with over 100,000 five-star reviews, it's simple. If you have a computer, Honey should be on it. So join Honey for free by visiting joinhoney.com slash gamermeld. And thanks to Honey for sponsoring this video. Next up for today, Nvidia just announced an upcoming press event for January 12th, 2021. And as you can see, they state, quote, Join us as we unveil the latest innovations in gaming and graphics. As for what that means, most outlets think we're looking at the mobile RTX 3000 series and potentially the 3060, which actually brings me to my next story. In a post originally published by Igor's Lab, we have an update on GPU releases from Nvidia. For one, it looks like Nvidia is planning to launch two variants of the 3060, one with 6GB of memory and one with a whopping 12. Not only that, but he claims a 12GB model will be released between January 11th and the 14th, and this was actually posted before Nvidia announced their upcoming event. Either way, that means we should expect the 12GB model then, but Video Cards claims the 6GB variant isn't expected until the end of January. The second bit of news from Igor's lab is that Nvidia's RTX 3080 Ti has been postponed. Specifically, it's now set to launch between February 11th and the 17th. And video cards seems to be hearing the same thing about both of these cards, so it does seem to be quite accurate. Oh, and the 3080 Ti rumored to cost around $1,000 like I originally assumed, which would set it up to be a contender for AMD's RX 6900 XT, though also quite a hit to anyone that purchased their RTX 3090. Next up for today, it looks like we could see hardware prices beginning to rise with yet another potential blow to the DIY market. Oh no! God! No! God, please, no! 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 This time, it comes from TSMC, who makes chips for NVIDIA, AMD, and tons of other companies. The bad news is that the company is ending discounts for some of their largest customers. See, up until now, if you buy a certain number of processors per month, TSMC would give you a 3% discount per wafer. And that's what they're apparently ending. According to Tech Power Up, this would affect Apple, Nvidia, and AMD, and this could affect prices from those companies. Remember that AMD's RX 6000 and Ryzen 5000 are made from TSMC's 7 nanometers. Of course, 3% isn't massive, but every little bit counts. Let's just hope some of these companies decide to eat the costs instead. Luckily, another report claims we can expect a price decrease in SSDs, so hopefully things will level out. And moving back to Nvidia's release news, this time we're talking a release that actually happened, as the company just released their newest monster of a GPU, the RTX A6000. Now, what makes it a monster is that it's the only GPU that utilizes the full GA102. Remember that both the 3090 and 3080 are built from the GA102, but they both use cut-down variants. 
The A6000, on the other hand, has the full 10,752 cores enabled. Of course, with that said, this isn't a gaming GPU. It's essentially a Quadro card, but Nvidia has officially gotten rid of their Quadro and Tesla naming schemes. And for those who don't know, the A6000 was originally unveiled back in October, but it's now for sale, and we know more details. But really quickly, let's go over the rest of the specs. For starters, it comes with a whopping 48GB of GDDR6, so not 6x memory like their gaming cards. It also comes with a TGP of 300 watts and offers support for NVLink. The big thing here though is price, as the A6000 tops an eye-watering price tag of $4,650, making it quite an expensive GPU. But once again, this is not a gaming card. And lastly for today, we have a really impressive benchmark from Intel's upcoming 11,900K. Of course, if you saw my last video, we learned the specs of it, and it's an absolute power hog. But if you don't care about that, the performance is pretty impressive. And as we get into this, remember that the 11,900K is an 8-core CPU. Either way, the benchmark was originally found and shared by Tom Apisak, and as you can see, it's of ashes of the singularity. Now, what makes this impressive is that he shows a comparison from the same user, which is the best way to do it as they're typically using the same hardware. So when we look, you can see that the 8-core 11900K actually beats the 10-core 10900K, which is seriously impressive. Of course, it doesn't win by much, and Ashes of the Singularity isn't the best CPU benchmark, but that's not bad regardless. Then again, given that massive power draw, it really does show the aging 14 nanometer process, whether it's on a new core or not. It really would have been nice to see what Rocket Lake could do with a 10 core part. So while that does it for today, are you excited for all of Nvidia's upcoming GPUs or are you kind of more excited for Rocket Lake? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.